Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to you. I'm so glad that you're all here with me this morning. Hi. Well, welcome to the Children's Chapel. We're back downstairs again where we have all this amazingness set up. And we're going to show you what it looks like when you come to Sunday school or to the nursery. So, hold on. We're going to have my son, Adine. Say hi, Adine. Hello. Adine's going to say hi, but hold on. Pause right there at one of the spots. So if a bunch of kids are coming down the stairs, we have a spot like this on the ground. Well, it'll be facing that way for them. Letting them know where they can stand. Whoops. And be able to be socially distant, right? So Adine is at one of those spots now. And then six feet in front of him is another spot. So if there was a bunch of kids coming down, make sure you stop at the spots, mister. Okay. So if there was a bunch of kids lined up, they'd all wait at those spots. Now down here, we have Miss Gloria. She's new to our nursery. Yay! So Miss Gloria is going to have Adeen sanitize his hands first. Uh-oh, it might be turned off. So after he sanitizes his hands, he would get checked in. So he gets his temperature checked. Just that easy. And then he would tell Miss Gloria his name and his station number. So at each one of our stations, you'll see a cross there, right? See the little crosses there? Those has numbers on them. So there's station one, station two, station three, all the way to the back there. So each one has a station number. So when you come to Sunday school, you get a station number. Like, Adine, what station number is yours? After he's checked in, he gets to go to a station. Now, he can sit on his mat, his beach towel, <laughs> or he can sit in his chair. Adine's at station four. And then everything at that station is for him. The basket is his supplies. Yep. The kids all put their phones under the crosses. And this way, they're ready to learn, right? Thank you. So that's what it looks like when you come to Sunday school. Not too bad, right? Yeah, really easy. You're probably used to doing that at, at your schools already, right? Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, today I want to show you something special. So let's get our camera ready, right? Uh-oh. Almost dropped the camera. Can you believe that? Silly me. Alrighty. So we'll get our camera all set. There we go. And I have something I want to show you. So before we talk about Moses, it's not my turn yet? Sorry, Moses. It's not your turn yet. Oh, okay. I'll just wait my turn. I want to talk to you about what this is. Do you know what this is? It's a potato. It's a potato. It's a potato. It's a Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head. Have you ever played with one of these? I have a basket full of supplies right here for Mr. Potato Head. So, what's fun about Mr. Potato Heads is you can give them silly feet. Ours is going to have bare feet today. And you can give them eyes, right? Oh, he's looking pretty good. Let's see here. He needs a nose, right? So you can change the way he looks. Here's another nose. Ta-da! Silly Mr. Potato Heads. Let's see what else we got here. He needs... A smile, doesn't he? How about that? What else is missing? Oh, he needs some ears. So that way he can hear what we're talking about. Let's see. There's another ear. Oh, he's looking like a pretty happy Mr. Potato Head to me. How about some arms? And if you have the... Oh, I put his arms on upside down. <laughs> There we go. 
There's our Mr. Potato Head. They also can have hats, right? And some of the Mr. Potato Heads, you can give them fancy mustaches, like this one here. How's that look? <laughs> he looks pretty silly. Or how about this mustache? It might be more familiar for you. There we go. But for today, we'll take his mustache. He shaved. So he's clean shaven today. Good job, Mr. Potato Head. That must be tough learning how to shave. <laughs> so there's our Mr. Potato Head. He looks he looks like he might be, what emotion do you think Mr. Potato Head has right now? Well, if you said happy, you're probably right. How about if we give Mr. Potato Head this face? Uh-oh, he broke an arm. <laughs> oh, he looks a little goofy, huh? Okay, what about this one? <gasps> he probably looks silly, huh? Yeah, I think it looks pretty silly. Let's see, what if we gave him this face though? Uh-oh, what's Mr. Potato Head look like now? He looks sad, right? Oh, maybe he's sad because he lost his cat. Mr. Potato Head looks sad. What about this face? Oh. He doesn't look very happy, huh? Maybe he looks sick, like he's not feeling good. Yeah. How about... Now. Oh, he still looks sad, right? What if... What emotion do you think, Mr. Potato? I'm using a dry erase marker. Make sure you have permission first. How about now? How does Mr. Potato Head look now? What do you think he looks like? Ooh, I think Mr. Potato Head might look angry, right? Mr. Potato Head looks very angry to me. Do you ever get angry? Think about the things that make you really angry. Here's another Potato Head that came over to play. Uh-oh. Looks like this potato head might be making fun of our other one. Maybe because he only has one arm, right? <gasps> Do you think that might make him angry? Of course, there's lots of things that can make us angry. What do you feel like doing when you're angry? Maybe you hit? Uh-oh, that's not good. Maybe stomp your feet? Maybe throw things? Yeah, there's lots of things we can do when we feel angry. But here's what I want you to know. Everyone gets angry sometimes. And it's okay to be angry, just like it's okay to be sad and it's okay to be happy. Maybe you get angry because you got in trouble, right? Maybe you didn't do your homework and, and mom and dad got upset with you and that made you angry. Maybe they told you you had to stop playing video games because you had to clean your room. That can make you angry, right? It's okay to feel angry. Even people who love each other very much, like parents or brothers and sisters or cousins or even best friends sometimes get mad. Even God might get mad. Yeah. Can you think of a time that God might have gotten angry? I can. Let's think about that. So our Hebrew people, our amazing Hebrew people, they're out in the desert here, right? Yeah, exactly. And what did they do? Uh-oh. Remember, they made a golden calf. And they started praying to the calf instead of to God. Moses was up getting the Ten Commandments to bring down, remember the rules, the first four rules teach us how to love God, and then the last six teach us how to love one another. So Moses came down. Do you think he was angry when he saw that? I'm pretty sure he was very angry. I'm pretty sure God was angry too. Now, does that mean that God won't allow the people to get to the promised land? Well, here's what happened next. In the book of Exodus, we know 
that God was angry with all the Hebrew people. Angry like Mr. Potato Head angry. Like I just lost my arm angry. Like I just got hit by my best friend angry. Like Starbucks is out of pumpkin spice angry. That's pretty angry. So Moses, that's me. Yes, Moses reminded God that the Hebrews were his people all the way down, even though they were being bad. <laughs> even though they were being bad, that was still his people. And he loved his people very much. So to help them stay on the right path and lead them to the path of the promised land, God sent an angel to help guide them. So then they were able to follow this angel to the promised land. That's a lot of love. I mean, the Hebrews were pretty bad, weren't they? <laughs> That's a pretty bad joke, isn't it? <laughs> they must have been pretty bad to, to make a false god and, and pray to that god, right? A golden calf? That can't help us. But when we are angry, God can help us. There's lots of things we can do when we're angry. We could throw our toys. Uh-oh. But what if I throw my toys and they break? And then I won't be able to play with them anymore, right? Hmm. What if I'm angry and I decide I'm just going to stop my feet? Uh-oh. That's probably not a good way to deal with our anger, is it? No, not at all. What if I yell back at the people? Hey, I'm angry! Do you think that's a good idea? Maybe, but maybe not that way, right? So there are some things that we can do. Let's see. So if we're really, really angry and we just want to throw all our toys, what could we do instead? We can practice breathing. Ready? I want you to do this with me. We're going to take a deep breath and hold in as much air as we can for five seconds. And then we're going to hold our finger out in front of us like this and pretend that we're blowing out a candle. Are you ready? Let's try it together. Deep breath in. <gasps> hold it for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. OK. Well, it's not going to work with a mask on, but you get the idea. And you can do that over and over again until you calm down. Another way that we could deal with our anger is maybe we could go outside and kick the soccer ball around, right? Or if it's wintertime, shovel the snow. Mm -hmm. Another thing that we can do is we can wait till we calm down and then we can talk to that person that we're angry about or angry with about what we're angry about. There's lots of things that can make us angry. Like the potato heads down here, hitting somebody can make them angry. Taking their arm away could make them angry. Ah, I got your arm. Ah, I got your nose. My nose now. Mr. Potato Head is getting angrier and angrier, isn't he? Yeah. Sometimes we can be angry about things we can't control. Like, if somebody is mean to somebody else, that might make us angry. Maybe they're mean to them because they look different or talk different. That could make us really angry. We might be angry because COVID has changed everything for us, right? Now, when we get angry about things that we don't control, that's when we want to talk to our parents or our trusted adults. We can also talk to God. So let's do that now. So we're going to fold our hands so we're not playing with all our toys here because that would be bad. <laughs> and because this is our time with God and nobody else's. So we'll fold our hands, we'll close our eyes, and we'll bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for loving us and giving us all these emotions, happiness and joy, sadness, and even anger. But Heavenly Father, when we get angry, help us to know that we can go to you and that we can go to our trusted adults so that we can talk to them about what's making us angry so that we, they can help us. Lord, we want to thank you for being the loving and forgiving God that you are. 
And there may have been some things we've done this week, done out of anger, or that we've just done bad. Like, maybe we hit our brother or sister. Maybe we didn't turn in our homework. Maybe we lied about our room being clean. Miss Candy does that sometimes, too. My room is very messy. I have to go home after church today and clean it. Heavenly Father, help us to be better. Help us not to do those bad things again. Help us to have better control of our anger. And Lord, there's some things we can't control. But Lord, help us to have an understanding heart and be able to let go of that anger. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, I'm so glad that you were all here. Mrs. Potato Head apologized to Mr. Potato Head. So now, Mr. Potato Head is happy again. And that's what we do. All right, I will see you all next week. Bye.